welcome to another yet another interesting session discuss define do playing your way to amazing goals i am also excited to listen to this topic so i'll give it to tadia thank you so much savita it's so lovely to be here um let me just share my screen awesome it's so lovely to be here um i wish that we were all in person um i came to india in 2019 before covid um and it was one of my favorite conferences so hopefully soon we'll we'll be doing these in person again um so today we're here to talk about goals um just a bit about myself i'm talia lancaster i'm an agile coach for a bank in south africa called absa um and i'm also known as the sketching scrum master So I also do a lot of visual work, uh, graphic recording, design, sketch noting um, in the agile space. So um, you would have seen that Angie was supposed to present uh, with me. Unfortunately, she's not able to make it today. She's just had a big move uh, to a different country, um, but she will be here in spirit. So just to give her a bit of. Um, recognition as we did develop uh, this game together okay so we all familiar with with goals i just want to ask a question and it might be a bit of a unfair question given our times uh, but how many of you have set new year's resolutions if you could maybe just give us a reaction like a thumbs up or a smiley or in the chat you can say yes or no don't believe in it ankit <laughs> i see some thumbs ups okay so given our our times i think it is it is a a hard question there's a lot of uncertainty at the moment um For those of you who have set resolutions, how many of you have stuck to them? That's the hard part. No, no. No. Okay. So we all familiar with with setting goals, whether it's in our personal lives um or with our agile teams. So goal setting is really important and a lot of us do it. um but what we've realized with working with teams is that often it's very difficult to do and we don't always do it well so it's very hard to set goals that are really tangible and meaningful for teams uh where teams can actually take action against those goals um often what you find is the goals become these kind of beauty queen statements like we want world peace um you know and they become very vague Um so in this session we're going to be talking about goal setting um we using kind of OKRs as a framework uh, to discuss that um and there's an amazing uh, game that we're going to play to show you how we can have better conversations with teams and set better goals with our teams um but before before I get started I just want to quickly chat about some other ways that you may be familiar with before we get into OKRs um so how did we set goals or how do we maybe currently set goals uh with our teams um so a lot of you may know this one um smart goals so smart stands for specific measurable achievable relevant and time bound so this is a really awesome technique uh, to make sure that your goals are um you know achieve these criteria um but what i found working with teams is that smart goals are sometimes difficult to connect up to a broader organizational goal so you can set a really great uh, smart goal in isolation but how does it link into the broader organizational strategy um and the organizational goals so not to say that smart goals are bad it's actually a really brilliant technique um but it does have limitations in terms of connect connecting up and cascading down to the teams another one that you may be familiar with if my slides work uh <laughs> is KPIs 
So KPI stands for Key Performance Indicators. Um, and this is quite a common one used in organizations. Um, it measures the success, the output, the quantity or quality of an ongoing process. So the challenge with KPIs is that it often measures something that's already implemented, that's already happening in the organization. It doesn't always allow room for innovation or for aspirational goal setting. Um, so you can almost think of it as a dashboard of a car, maybe more a classic car because new cars nowadays do have a GPS and all of that. Um, but basically this dashboard of a car will tell you kind of how fast you're going, how much fuel you have, but it won't necessarily tell you where you are going, where do you want to land up and your destination uh, for the final outcome. So KPI is also good technique, but does have limitations. Okay, and then the last one, uh, balance scorecard. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with this one. Um, this is where you look at kind of four metrics, financial, customer, internal process, pr processes, and then learning and growth. The challenge with this is that often we set it for a whole year. So when we talk about agile goal settings, it can be quite limiting in that we don't have um, kind of a way to show progress and we don't have a means to maybe change throughout the year. Often also what happens in organizations is that we place a hyper focus on one of these areas. Um, often it's financial. So all the other things fall to the side and we only focus on the financial goals on the balance scorecard. So it's not as balanced as we think. Okay, so these traditional goal setting processes, I'm not saying that they're bad. Uh, I just want to kind of outline some of the limitations around them. Um, and then enter the OKR. Um, so OKRs have gained a lot of popularity lately. Um, I'm going to be using this as a framework because it's quite a lightweight framework to, to kind of learn. Obviously, goals are a lot harder than they look um, to do. Um, but OKRs have become very popular, and it's a really powerful um, way of setting goals with teams. So OKRs became popular because of Google. Um, Thank you, Google. Um, so Google has been using OKRs for years since they were a startup. Um, and maybe just a note before we continue is that the goal here is not to kind of be an expert in OKRs. I hope that you, you see some of the benefits of it, um, but it's about really just having better conversations with our teams and setting better goals uh, using techniques such as this discuss, define, do uh, board game. So Google attributes um, some of the benefits of OKR is that it helps create focus uh, within the organization. Um, it helps with transparency. So teams can see um, kind of what they're working towards from an organizational perspective. And then everyone can see what each team is working on uh, by looking at their OKRs. Um, it also helps with alignment. So um, OKRs are a great way to kind of set a large organizational goal and then cascade it down to the different departments or teams within that organization. Um, and then it's very much results focused. So objectives and key results. Um, so you set an objective of where you want to go and then you set key results to measure uh, progress towards that objective. Um, so it's very much focused on an outcome um, as opposed to measuring activities or actions. Um, so that's, those are kind of the benefits of OKRs that companies who use it have, have seen. And it has been around for a while. So at the moment, OKRs are top of mind and they're very popular. Um, but they actually come from Peter Drucker's Management by Objectives, um, which is, you know, from 1954. So 
the thinking around uh, goal setting and managing based on outcomes is not new. Um, and then Andy Grove co-founded Intel, um, and he kind of creates this OKR thinking in 1968. I think where it really became uh, quite embedded and quite popular is a guy called John Dua. So he then joined Intel um, and learned this OKR framework. Um, and then he introduced it to Google in 1999. Um, and Google has attributed a lot of their success to using a framework like OKRs. Um, John Dewar has a really awesome book called um, Measure What Matters. I would definitely recommend if you want to read a bit deeper on OKRs as a framework. Other companies also use them like Facebook, LinkedIn, Adobe. So it is becoming more and more popular. I know a lot of the work that I do in the bank, uh, we've, we've kind of adopted OKRs and it, it has seen a lot of benefits for us as well. Okay, so what are OKRs? And essentially there are two parts to it. So it's quite a, a simple uh, framework, but again, uh, quite difficult to, to actually put into process uh, to put into uh, you know, action. So the O in OKR stands for objectives. And this answers the question, where do we need to go? Um, or you know, what do we want to achieve? So your objective is, is a qualitative statement. It's not gonna have any numbers or metrics in it, but it's there to kind of inspire the team. It's an, aspirational statement of where we want to go. Um, it should set a clear direction and it should be very inspiring and galvanizing for the teams. So that's what the O of OKR stands for. And then the KR is key results. So this answers a question, how do we know we're getting there? Um, and your key results um, kind of fulfill a lot of the smart uh, smart questions in the sense that they need to be very specific. Um, they are quantitative, so they need to have clear numbers and metrics in them. Um, but these key results would measure progress towards that outcome. The difference between OKRs and some of the other goal setting techniques is that your key results should be something that you can influence and not necessarily something that you do. So, here, we're not trying to list actions. Um, we'll have a time and place to make sure that we're doing what we have to. But your key results here is measuring an actual outcome or a result um, that would help you achieve that objective. Um, it should be difficult, but not impossible. So we talk about stretch goals. We want to be quite um, aspirational here, but we also don't want to set our teams up for failure. So we need to make sure that these key results are specific, a little bit stretch, um, but they're not kind of impossible. Okay, so what does this look like? So this is typically how we would structure an OKR. Um, and it's a statement, we will, and then you'll have your objective statement there, as measured by, and then you'll list your key results. So what we try to do is not actually have too many key results because exponentially it just becomes too confusing. We want to focus teams in the right direction. So your key results, you want three to five key results per objective. You don't want 10 or 20. So you wanna be very specific about uh, what those key results are. Um, when we talk about setting OKRs in an agile way, it's also important to look at the time frame that you're looking at. Um, so traditionally with goal setting, we'd often set goals for the whole year um, and goals you know, change and things change. So we want to allow a feedback loop to ensure that we can actually come back and assess uh, what we're measuring. So depending on what level you're setting these at, for an organization, they may set it for a year or for six months, but for your teams, you want to set it in shorter time frames. So maybe a quarter, if you're a large organization or monthly or every two months, 
you want to actually come back and reflect on whether you've achieved these results or not. Okay, so here's an example. We will improve customer satisfaction. Often this is where we stop. So in organizations, often we're given these beauty queen statements by our executives to say, we want to improve customer satisfaction or we want to reduce cost. But the power of OKRs is that we actually get very specific about what that looks like and how we're going to measure success for the team. So we will improve customer satisfaction as measured by. And here you see that we've got three key results. The first one is increase average overall customer satisfaction from seven to eight out of 10 points. Okay, so whatever um, kind of metrics that organization is using, they want to improve it by one point um, from seven to eight. The second key result is we will improve average turnaround time for queries to less than 24 hours. Okay, so again, you see that's very um, specific and it does contribute to that customer satisfaction. And then the last one is we will exceed customer feedback rating scores of 90% overall. Okay, so that's kind of how we would structure a typical OKR. And then depending on which level you're setting this for, um, you know, it may be very uh, specific to that team. So how would certain teams contribute to that seven to eight out of 10 for the overall customer satisfaction? Um, and then how do we measure these? So depending on, oh, I see my dots have moved a bit. So depending on what kind of organization you're in and the organizational culture, um, you would then set an achievement score. So Google aims to, um, to only achieve 70% of their goals. So that means that they want people to be very um, aspirational. They don't want to set goals that are too small because then they're not stretching the teams. Some organizations, though, want to see all green. Um, so depending on your organization, you would then set how many of these key results are we aiming to achieve within that time frame? Um, and then you track kind of, have we met this key result or not? Dahlia, there is a question. Do you want to take it? Yes. Can you okay. please elaborate key result one and three? Yeah, so I mean, this is just an example. So depending on your organization, they may have different surveys. Um, so, you know, the one might be a, an NPS, that's seven or eight out of 10 might be your NPS. Um, and then the key result three may be a different metric um, in a different uh, kind of feedback survey. So I think this is just to illustrate um, the types of um, key results you could have. Um, and it's also to illustrate how specific they are. So you see, we've said often often it would be improve from this to this. So KR1 kind of shows where we are currently and where we want to be. Um, and KR3 kind of just has a, a specific target. So this is to illustrate how you would phrase those key results to make sure that they're specific enough that you can actually measure yourself against them. In case the OKR is not achieved, should we then uh, set the same objective for the next cycle. That's up to you as a, as a team, right? So I think in, within the Agile framework, what you may decide to do is do a bit of reflection to say, you know, what happened? Why didn't we achieve this? Is it too ambitious? Um, in which case, do we kind of uh, manage those expectations down? or were there certain impediments that we could remove, et cetera, et cetera? So I think... Um, it's very con context specific uh, for your team. Um, what I like about it is that it does make things uh, visible to actually have those conversations. So in the past, if you just had that improved customer satisfaction, how do we know that we've achieved that? So it gives you another feedback loop to kind of say, did we hit this goal? If not, 
how do we adjust for the next um, for the next goal? Obviously, the 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 shorter your time frame, the more opportunity there is then to to adjust and to assess. So, if you're setting something like this for the whole year, you won't know necessarily if you've reached it or not, and you don't have the opportunity to adapt. Whereas, if you're setting it for a shorter time frame, you can then have those conversations to say, okay, for the next quarter. How do we adjust these to make them more uh, tangible or realistic for the team? Does that answer the questions? Yes, Talia. Should there be different OKRs for internal and external customers? It completely depends on the organization. So what you may have is you may have an objective that speaks to external customers. So this one kind of uh, would fit nicely for that. And you may have a, another objective that speaks to internal customers, depending on kind of what your, what your metrics are there. Are there different teams that work for kind of external versus internal customers? So those teams may have different um, objectives for each. So at an organizational level, you may speak to internal, external customer satisfaction. When you cascade those down to the teams, you may actually then say this team works on external customers. Their OKRs are going to be very specific to external customers. This team works on internal customers. But when we roll that up, we should achieve that organizational goal. So again, I think a lot of this is very kind of dependent on the context and on the team and the organization. Thank you for the questions. There are a lot of questions, Talia. Do you want? I know to there are end? a lot. <laughs> do you um, want to keep it to the end, or do you? Want so, to... so maybe just to say here, I want to kind of uh, get to the game, um, and then maybe we can answer some questions at the end. Uh, there is one about measuring it, which speaks to this. Um, so again, I think it depends on your your organization in terms of how many of those your manager is expecting you to achieve. So companies like Facebook and Google, they only expect their teams to hit 50 to 70% of the goals because if they hit 100% of the goals, they believe that the goals aren't or the KRs aren't ambitious enough. Um, in organizations that I work in, like banks, um, sometimes that could be seen as a negative if you're not reaching 100% of your KRs. So it really, you have to set it in a way that you're comfortable uh, you know, within your organization. But I would kind of um, encourage you to be a bit uh, aspirational and set some stretch ones. But maybe what you would say is that this is a stretch uh, KR, um, you know, but we want to be ambitious. We may not achieve this, but we want to at least try. Um, in terms of measuring at zero to one, um, there are different kind of brackets. So you say if we achieve I think it's zero to 40%. It's a, you know, and you give it different scores. Um, but I won't be going into that, that amount of technical um, detail around this. Um, but, but yeah, I can maybe answer it at the end. Okay. Cool. So I think some of the questions in the chat, let's circle back to them at the end, um, just in terms of time. Okay. So goal setting is hard, hard, even though OKRs look simple, it's only got two parts, objectives and key results. Um, there are some challenges in the organization. And maybe this is where some of the questions are coming from. Um, so one of the challenges that I've seen is that um, there are vague organizational goals being filtered down to the teams. Um, so this is, you know, I keep saying these beauty queen statements. This is like these very vague statements that executives just pass on to the teams um, without maybe sufficient uh, information for the teams to action these goals. Um, so we want to make sure that our goals are specific enough um, that the team can actually take that and run with it. Um, you'll see in the activity what what we try to do with teams is actually create a framework 
where teams can really ask the tough questions to make their goals more specific. Um, and then the converse of this is that they're not goals, but they're actually detailed actions that are being filtered down to the teams. So this is um, maybe managers or executives who are trying to micromanage the teams by giving them very specific actions as opposed to aspirational and inspirational goals. So what we want in agile teams is, you know, we want the teams to have relative autonomy in terms of how they contribute towards the organizational goals. Um, we don't want to tell teams exactly what and how to do their jobs. We want to say, this is what we want to achieve and let the teams actually figure out how to contribute to that organizational objective. Another challenge is that goals aren't achievable. It's not stretch, it's impossible. So this is also something to be conscious of. Um, we don't want to set teams that end up demotiv uh, goals that end up demotivating our teams. So we want a bit of a stretch uh, because sometimes that leads to new thinking and innovation. But we don't want to, from the onset, know that this is actually um, impossible because that can lead to actually demotivating our teams more than anything else. So we want to make sure that, that the goals are somewhat um, achievable for the teams. What if objectives and key results keep changing? There's such brilliant questions. Let's... Let's do them maybe after the, the, the game. Okay, and then the other challenge is that goals are not stretched at all. And this happens in organizations maybe where, um, you know, they're not, uh, they penalize people if they don't achieve all of their key results and they're maybe not kind of uh, supportive in terms of uh, failure. Um, so this is where people would set goals that are very small. Um, they would set kind of very operational goals that they know they can achieve. The problem with that is we often then stifle innovation and new thinking because we just carry on doing what we've been doing in the past. Okay, so what, what, what Angie and I did um, is we actually gamified a way to have conversations and a way to define your goals better as, as teams. Um, and this is quite important to us because gamifying things really help people engage, um, you know, and it's a lot more fun than just kind of sitting and, um, and trying to wade your way through these challenges. So it promotes collaboration within the team um, and it can be quite fun. Um, just a quick question. Do any of you like to play um, board games? So like Monopoly, Catan, of course. <laughs> okay, yes. awesome. And, you know, some board games are more difficult than others. Um, but the first time you play that board game, do you know it perfectly? Or do you have to read the instructions? yeah so I know Catan when when I first played that it was a lot of kind of going back to the rule book and checking and a lot of debate so as we learn this this board game just be kind to yourself um, and be aware that you know you won't get it perfectly the first time but this is an opportunity for you to practice the game so that you can actually take it back to your teams so um, we want to kind of go through it, make sure that you're comfortable um, so that it, it might be something that you could actually use with your teams to help set uh, better OKRs. Um, what we do is serious, but it doesn't mean it can't be fun. Okay, so kind of especially in these times, making sure that we really engage with our teams and, and make things as fun as possible. Okay, so this is, this is the board game. Um, it actually started out as a physical one, but um, 
but it's now virtual, which is awesome. Um, and everyone will receive, uh, you can download a copy, I'll send you a link um, of the Google Slides pack so you can take it and use it with your teams. It's shared under Creative Commons. So we want, we want people to use it because we've spent a lot of time and effort uh, creating it. Um, okay, so the challenge is with these conferences is that we don't all work for the same organization and we're not all in the same team. So when you play this with your team, when you go back to the office, it's going to be much easier because you're all coming from the same context. The objectives you're working with are real. Um, however, for workshops, we're going to have to simulate a case study. Um, and that's just to make sure that you know, we can practice the game together. Um, so the case study for the game we're going to play is we will improve internal employee engagement. So that's our objective statement. And what you'll notice with the key results here is that they're not the best key results. They're quite vague. Um, they may not be the right things to measure. And that's intentional because as we play the game, we're actually going to make these better. So by the time we finish the board game, these should be a lot more specific and measurable. Okay, so the key results as it stands for our case study are key result one, interview 50 employees on how to improve our work culture. Kind of sounds like an action. <laughs> key result two, improve weekly employee satisfaction score. Okay, it's pretty vague. Key result three, increase number of employee engagement activities. Okay, so this is often where teams start. Teams start with things that are quite vague, things that are not really measurable, um, and that's fine. We want you to kind of Start with your team with what you have. Start with, even if they are vague, start with uh, what you've been given or what you have, and then work through this process to have the right conversations um, and to prompt your thinking around how to actually measure these goals. Okay, so I'm actually going to exit presentation mode so I can demo a bit here. Okay, so when you get into the game, um, you'll see that there are instructions. So again, think about the first time you played Catan or Monopoly. Um, you may have to go back to the instructions every now and then just to check. Um, but this is a space for you to practice to take back to your team so that you are 100% confident when you play it with your teams. So this is how we're going to play it. So we're going to have two facilitators. The first facilitator, when you go into your breakout rooms, is going to share their screen and they're going to help kind of move the tokens, pick up cards um, and help kind of guide through the game. The second facilitator will help roll the dice and work the timer. So, you know, um, us Agilists, we love time boxing. So there are links on the slide here where you can access a, a dice um, widget um, and a timer. Also happy if you use your phones. If you have an app on your phone, you're welcome to use that. So what the dice looks like is this. So you click roll and it rolls. You see, we have to improvise working virtually. And then your timer is here. It's a two minute timer. But again, you can use any um, tools that you like. Okay, so facilitator one will read the key result um, and then kind of help uh, work through the game. So we let me actually demo this for you. It's easier. So the way this game works and what you'll notice here is that we actually are not, um, we're not playing against each other. Um, we're actually playing together as a team. So... How do I? Okay, there we go. So the goal here is not to have one individual win the game. 
the goal is to have better conversations as a team and at the end kind of refine and create better goals together. Um, what I've done in, in our organization is also invite executives um, or management to play this game with the team. Um, they can act as SMEs. So if the team has any questions as they go, um, that person is there in the moment to answer them. And that's a great way to ensure that there is alignment between the team and maybe a broader organizational objective. Okay, so this is how it works. There are three different card packs. So you'll see these are actually movable cards. Um, the first one is discuss. So these are questions and you'll notice, uh, you know, some coaching questions here. These are questions that are prompting the team to discuss and have conversations around the actual goal or around your key result. Um, define. These are questions that relate specifically to how do we make it more measurable. And then do, these are questions that may help you come up with actions that when you finish the session, you actually walk away with some tangible actions for the team. So how the game works is you'll see on the side here, you've got, this was from our case study. Um, so you've got key result one, key result two, key result three each of them on stickies. Um, I think this said 50, but it doesn't matter. The vaguer, the better to start. Okay, so when we start, we're going to play one key result at a time. So the goal of the game is to get your key result from the start to the finish. Okay, so you'll see a key result one token. So which key result are we discussing? You can actually start with anyone. I'm just going to start with number one. So you're going to drag the sticky into the hot seat there. Um, and then you're going to drag the token onto the start. So if we start with key result one, um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to roll the dice. So it works similar to many board games. We're going to roll the dice. One. Okay. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to move this key result token one spot. So I landed on the blue, which you can see as a discuss card. So on the board, you'll have different colors and those correlate to your different cards that you pick up. Okay. So now what we're going to do is you can either move the top card away or you can actually just delete it. Okay. Now we've got a question. What is the tangible benefit of using this key result? Okay, so our key result is interview employees on how to improve our work culture. What is the benefit for our organization in terms of um, interviewing customers? Okay. Um, and then what will happen is we're going to time box the conversation because what we want here is we want to promote thinking and get a lot of different perspectives and ideas. We don't want to get stuck on one question for an hour. So we're actually going to start this. We're going to start this two-minute timer, and then we're going to have a conversation as a team. So everyone's going to discuss what this means in terms of that key result. For the rest of the team members that are playing the game, um, I'm going to ask that we go very low tech. And if you could just get paper and a pen, and just jot down any notes that you think are useful in terms of the conversations you've had for that key result. And then at the end, that will help you craft a better key result. And then you just repeat. So once your timer has, um, has stopped, okay, so two minutes up, then we move on. Okay, so now we're going to roll the dice again. Six. Awesome. Oh, sorry, you're actually right. What do the arrows mean? If I'd landed on one, I would have jumped there. Apologies for that. So the arrows is almost like snakes and ladders. So if you land on one with the arrow, you move up or down. So we should have actually been on define. Okay. It's okay to not get it perfect or so um, the first time. Okay, so... We would have actually been there and then we go six, one, 
two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so it's a measure, a define. So we're going to look at that. What is the baseline from which we'll be measuring? So if we're talking about interviewing employees on how to improve work culture, have we interviewed employees in the past? If so, how many, how many are we targeting for this um, key result? So this is really talking about those numbers that we want to include here in this, this measure. Okay, so in your teams, when you play this, um, I want you to also pick an SME. So your SME is going to be like your executive um, who's going to answer all those questions. Um, and that SME can be, you can use your own experience. So you can use your own uh, organization as an example. So when you get a question, question like, what is a baseline? When you play this with your teams, you'll know the answer because you're all working in the same organization. But for the purpose of this uh, uh, conference, um, I'd like you to just pick one executive SME who's going to answer your questions. So what is the baseline? That SME is going to say 50. Last month, we interviewed 50 employees. Okay, cool. So now how many do we want to interview this time? Okay, so you're going to have facilitator one, share the screen, help move the cards and the tokens. Um, facilitator two, help roll the dice and set the timer. Um, and then an SME who will help answer any specific questions. I don't want you to get too caught up in those questions because it is a, a case study. It's not like a real uh, situation. Um, so rather just pick someone who can answer any questions that are very specific to that case study. Okay, and then what happens, um, but we'll see how far um, we get. So the objective here is actually to get all of your key results. So key result one, we're going to keep playing, keep playing, pick up cards, discuss, take notes, and then we're going to finish. So key result one has gone through the game. Now we're going to move on to key result two. Okay, so this one is going to go to the hot seat here. And our key result two token is going to move on to the start line. And we're going to repeat the process. If in your breakout rooms you run out of cards, there is a slide right at the end with more cards. So these are actually stacks. Um, so when you select them, you can just kind of select all of them, copy, paste, and put it on your board. Um, but I'm hoping that we, we don't run out of cards for this workshop. Then what happens at the end, but I don't think you're going to get uh, this far. So after the game, after you've taken all your key results through the board game, you've had awesome conversations, you've had prompting, coaching questions on uh, how to improve those key results. What you're going to do as a team is have a conversation um, and you're actually going to reword and refine your objectives and your key results. So from all your notes, you're going to say, this key result, interview employees on how to improve our work culture. Is that the right thing? How do we make it more measurable? Um, you know, how do we actually reword this key result so that it's meaningful? Okay. Decide on a time frame as, your, as, as the team. I would say maybe a quarter, three months. Um, you know, it's a nice, it's a nice time frame as you think about the example. Okay, clear as mud. Okay, it's exciting. You guys can practice here. And then um, if you have any questions, uh, we can answer them when we come back together. Um, so what's going to happen is um, we're going to put you into breakout rooms. So Vita is going to help uh, put you all into breakout rooms. And I ask you all to be adventurous and brave and give it a try. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but this is a great opportunity for you to practice. Um, if you're not in the mood to run your own game, and I do understand with these conferences, sometimes it's nice to, to sit back and watch. Um, I'll be running a demonstration in the main room. 
So if you go into a breakout room and you don't want to play the game, uh, please just exit that breakout room and come back to the main room. What I'll do in the main room is I'll ask for some volunteers, maybe three or four people to, to act as a team, and I'll be the facilitator and we're going to play the game together. Um, so, Savita, we might just have to see after a few minutes. We might have to reshuffle. If there's only one person left in a room, we can, um, yeah, we can reshuffle. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, How much time, Talia, for this game? I think let's do let's do 30 minutes. Okay. Um sorry, my my time zone here is different. So we're ending at hop past. So let's do 30 minutes and then we'll come back and do a close out and questions. Okay, fine. Let me sorry, just before I forget, I'm gonna post the link to all the slides. So there's a folder, um, there are 10 rooms, but obviously just corresponding to which room you go into we may not have 10 depending on how many people how many rooms would you like to do Savita we have 90 people so I thought we can okay, do 10, so we'll do 10. Yeah. okay perfect so can I just oh do I not have rights to paste in the chat you have you did right now okay I just want to give you the links to all the boards so each of you will have your own board game. Just check that you're in the right board for your breakout room. Hmm. Okay, let me do this. So this is a folder. You'll see all the different uh, boards in there. Uh, breakout rooms one to ten. Um, so just go into the number that uh, that correlates with your breakout room so you'll see so something the, like this the link is not clickable so. it is not no it is working can you try again yeah you you copy it in the chat isn't it Yes. Yes, it's in the chat. Okay, it's great. Copy first. So you guys will go to the folder with all the boards, but just click on the one that is your breakout room. Okay, I'll go ahead and create. If you have all seen Thank the you. link. Yeah. Perfect. Good luck, everyone. Have fun. 15 minutes for this game. 30 minutes. Okay, I've created the room. You would all got an invite to join the room, please. Yeah, I can see people going and joining. Talia, you are a host, so you could join any room. Yeah. So I think what I'll do is I'll stay in the main room and do the demonstration. Mm -hmm. um, if people have questions, I may just have to address them, but... I'm just seeing whether people have enough room, people in every room. Okay, we have room seven, only two people. I see some people are staying with us in the main room. Yes. So I'm just checking the number of people in each room. Okay, room three, room four has enough. Room five has five people. Room six has three. Minimum is three, right? Uh, Talia? Yeah. Okay. I think three should be fine. Okay. So only one room has an issue, which is room number seven. Can you move that person to a different yes. room? I'm doing it, Tali. Thanks so much, Savita. Okay, and everyone who stayed with us in the main room, um, I am going to ask for some volunteers. <laughs> so not all of you are off the hook, but um, the rest of you who are not part of the demonstration can just observe. Okay, so I think let's get started on, on our one. Um,
just give me one sec. Okay, so can I ask for what I'll do is I'll play the role of facilitator. So facilitator one and two. Um, so I'll my sh screen is shared and I'll roll the dice and all of that. Um, but we need a team who can have some awesome conversations. Um, so can I get some volunteers who want to be part of the team? I think about three or four people should be enough. Um, maybe if you could just give me a reaction, raise your hand or a thumbs up. Oh, wait. Okay. There we go, Kavita. Thank you, Suresh. Is there anyone I'm not seeing? Okay, let's get maybe one more. The team can't be two people. Can we get one more volunteer? All you have to do is kind of have a conversation if you if you have input, be part of our awesome team. Can we get one more volunteer? There we go. How do I say your name? Anusuya. Yeah, you're right. You can call me as Anu. Awesome, Anu. Thank you. And Rishmi. Okay, perfect. We've got our team. Um, so Kavita, Suresh, Anu, and Rishmi. Okay. Um, who wants to be our SME? So your S you as an SME are going to base this case study on your company. So if it's a small startup or if it's a big organization, if we have questions, we're going to lean on you to answer our questions. So maybe just come off mute uh, as part of our team members if you want to be our SME. Rishmi, is that you um, huh? volunteering? Hey. Got a very young SME there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll be SME then. Sorry, I can't see if your hands are up to be SME or be part of a team. So I'll play as SME then. So I'll base it on our big bank. Okay, awesome. So as a team, we're going to start with uh, this first key result. Um, so remember our objective we've been given from our, um, our executive is improve internal employee engagement, okay? Quite vague. Um, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the first key result and we're gonna play the game. So the first key result is interview employees on how to improve our work culture. Okay, so I'm gonna take the key result token one, I'm gonna move it there um, and I'm gonna roll the dice. I'll show you so you can trust me. Five, okay, awesome. So this one, just keep me honest with the arrows. One, two, three, four, five, okay. So the first question for us is gonna be a define card. So the define cards speak to um, measurements. Okay, and I'm gonna read the question and then start the timer. So the question here is, how much, how many, have you expressed the key result using a number, percentage, or amount? Um, so I'm gonna start the timer and then I'm gonna ask our team to come off mute and, and maybe give their opinions here. Uh, Talia, quick question. Is it possible to, yeah, zoom in a little bit? Yes, sorry. <laughs> I don't All know right, perfect. Uh, let me do this fit. Okay, there we go. All right. um, so Thank how you. much, how many, have you expressed the key result? And let me just get a piece of paper so I can also take notes. 
have you expressed the key result using a number, percentage, or amount? So we haven't interview employees on how to improve our work culture. Okay, so we want to add some, um, some measurable criteria to this then, right? Like some numbers? Definitely, thanks, Suresh. Yes. Some percentage can we add? Cool, so um, that's a good idea. So if we were to express it with a percentage, what would it be? Interview X percent, what would that percentage maybe be? Maybe so 5% percentage. 5%. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Uh, would that be a good representation or 10%? I feel like it might be a little low. Is, is it is it yeah. possible if we can increase that? So we said 10%. 10% should be fine. Okay. Um, and remember, this will be, it'll depend on what organization you're in. You know, if you've got 10 people, you know, yeah. does 10% make sense? Or if you've got 50,000 people, 10%, you know, so it um, mm -hmm. depends. Okay. Can we know how big our organization is in this scenario? So I'm working on me as a case study. Um, mm -hmm. see. Can you hear that horrible sound? <laughs> We're out of time. <laughs> okay, so in my organization, I work for a big bank with 40,000 employees, but I think we're going to take it as the team that, that I work for, the department, which is 120 employees. Okay. Because otherwise it's just too big. Mm -hmm. So ten percent help me with maths. Twelve. Twelve. Okay. And you know, so also then, it should be a mix of uh, different departments, right? Uh, exactly. In case different of a large organization. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe different age group. Yeah, different like demographics. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Age, gender, race, etc. Okay, awesome. Different, uh, uh, different part of if you're, uh, uh, it's a multinational company, maybe different uh, zones. Countries, different yeah, that's countries. Different. So it needs to be kind of representative. Yep. Okay. Awesome. I'm just taking notes for when we debrief. Okay. So our time's up on that card. We're going to move on um, because we want to just get as much thinking as possible without, um, you know, spending too much time on one. So I'm going to delete that one. Okay. Let's roll the dice again. This is more fun in person where you can um, <laughs> throw the dice, you know. Two, okay, one, two. Okay, so we've landed on a blue uh, block, which is the discuss cards. So let's see what the question is here. What is the tangible benefit of using this key result? Oh, let me start the timer. I'm a bad facilitator. Okay, start. What is the tangible benefit? If we interview 10% of a representative sample of our employees, what would we get out of that? Be able to gather some, yeah, some feedback from people who are representing the company. Okay. Also. How is the current situation? Cool. And how can we improve it? Some yes. pointers. So maybe you'd get like areas to improve or areas yep. that score very low or something. And since we're sampling at different levels, different regions and whatnot, I think we would would have a good chance to have a holistic view. Mm. So actually here, what would come out of that if we do that is to have a, a holistic view of the current um, 
areas that need attention maybe. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So anything else on this? We've got 30 seconds left. Or do you want to move on? We can move on, looks like. Yeah, uh, just one point. Maybe um, we, we can also get an idea of uh, something which is uh, uh, which works for someone might not be uh, good for uh, other set of people. So we get an idea about that also. So the culture, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so get a get an idea of different strategies for different people. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Okay, well done. That one's done. Okay, let's go to the next one. My Zoom bar's in the way. Um, okay, I wish you could all take turns. I don't know if I'm a good dice roller. Okay, three. Okay, one, two, three, and I've landed on move back to one, oopsie, two. Okay, so we're on a measure. Are you trying to achieve a positive target metric where more is better? I'm going to start the timer. This is a bit of a difficult one. So we said 10% of a representative sample. Um, is that a positive target? So increase as opposed to decrease or... So, so for this question, then trying to achieve where more is better, meaning like higher percentage is that was the question asking okay yeah because you can also get key results that are positive or negative right so you could phrase it to say i want to increase x to x or you could phrase it i want to decrease this to this you know so mm -hmm. that could be also positive or negative so for example if if in the past we've in, we've interviewed 5% of employees oh, our key you. result might say we want to you know we want to increase the number of people we interview from 5% to 10%. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, um, in my opinion yeah interviewing more people in the company will be good um, <laughs> given if it's not a expensive um, cuz depending on the interview it could be like a quick survey that could be sent out kind of form. Um, mm. So those kind of questionnaires could also be able to increase the sample size without adding too much cost. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, this is also my question. Uh, at this point of time, are we uh, free to change the key result or this is fixed? So what we'll do at the end, at this point, we kind of just um, taking lots of notes and taking lots of ideas. And then at the end, what we're going to do is we're going to reword it. So then we're going to come to this and we're going to say, is this even the right metric? You know, is this even the right thing? Because remember, key results should be very focused on the result, whereas this sounds like an action. So when we yeah. spoke about what benefit we would have out of that action, that may mm -hmm. actually be more of a key result than this. This may be an action. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then what we're going to do right at the end is we're actually going to take, so just as an example, we're going to start to actually define what those actions look like. You know, so from our conversations we've already had, You know, so it's, that might actually be more of an action. Okay. But yeah, that's a good question. But I think for now, let's let's carry on because we might even get more uh, thinking around this. Okay. So, yeah. 
uh, so in that case, can we, uh, as Suresh suggested, can we include the survey also as part of this? So it is not only the interview, uh, the survey to cover more sample. Yeah, so you can. So you can say, um, but what I would suggest is because otherwise you're going to spend a lot of time rewording that now. So what okay. I would suggest is you take notes as a team, you're going to take notes and say, uh, it's not just interviews, also survey. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, because that came out, that was actually a good idea. So we can get more people if we do an online survey instead of an interview. But we're going to take a note of that. And then at the end, we're going to say, okay, given all of our conversations, how do we reword this? And what are actually actions and not goals? Okay. okay. Talia, just one more minute for the breakout session to end. Okay, perfect. It can go, uh, was that 30 minutes, Savita? Uh, 20 minutes over. You, I thought it's 15 minutes. You want 30 minutes? Can you give them another um, five or 10 minutes? Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. I'll yeah. Do that. yeah. Okay. Awesome. Let's play one more round. Okay. For the for the sake of trying it out, is it possible if we do a green card? Yeah. So I mean, it. Uh, what do? You... Yeah. Oh yes. Since I we, you. Okay. Since we did blue and purple. We're just trying it. Yeah. Yes. I want to see where we land. One, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. We would have. Oh wait. Oh, it would still be purple. Okay. <laughs> But you see, it can go quite quick, depending on what you roll. Like, we almost finished, actually. Um, but yes, I agree. Let's do a green card. What are the prerequisites? What can we do to speed them up? Okay, so I'm going to start the timer. So if we say maybe now we've got maybe interviews and questionnaires, what, what would we have to have in place to start that? Well, we need to have a list of questions yeah. that we want to ask. User. Yeah, exactly. List and of questions. We, we should have the user group, user group identified to whom we need to yeah, interview. Exactly. That representative group. Mm -hmm. so, so what we'll do is we'll take notes. You could also, when you play this with your team, have someone capturing actions, right? So, um, mm -hmm. you know, list of questions or survey, um, you know, uh, define user group, uh, list of questions, define user group, and then you'd say, who's going to do that? I know I'm going to volunteer you, <laughs> Yeah, um, you know, or whatever. So then you'll have who's responsible by when next Tuesday or whatever. So from this, what's quite nice, especially the green cards, is it prompts you to think of action. So as soon as you come out of the session with your team, you already have something to start with. Um, and it's not just this pie in the sky um, goal, um, but you can actually go and start um, working towards this goal. Okay, I think the breakout rooms might come back soon. In terms mm -hmm. of the demonstration here, thank you so much to our volunteers. You guys are an awesome team. Kavita, Suresh, Anu, and Rishmi. Um, are there any other questions from the demonstration? Tali, I just had one request. If you can give us an access to uh, I have a question. Um, Use it. Sorry. Sorry. I think it was in the in, in the in the link just now. The the template was provided. Yeah, I and I lost also, it. I got disconnected, so I lost that. Oh, so. don't worry. I will um I will share with you. I've got a download link where you can copy the template. So when everyone comes back, I think I'll pop this link sure. in the chat. Okay. Do you think it's something you'd play with your teams? Yeah, it's very good. You're very useful. Yeah. Looks like we can even use it, use this for other brainstorming sessions or other discussions. We can customize yeah. it, right? 
Definitely. So, I mean, we're sharing this under Creative Commons. So as long as you don't go sell it for money, <laughs> um, <laughs> you're welcome to use it, change it, um, you know, reach out to us also if you want help or if you have ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Tanya, I have another question. Um, yeah. On the stack of cards, how many questions are there? Like, how many cards are there? Uh, it's a good question. Um, I think there are quite a few for discuss. They're not that many. They're less for define. So you'll see if you run out of cards, um, I can answer that for you. I just don't know how. I must find my document with the original um, thing. So maybe let's say 10, 15. Okay. Uh, but, but often you can reuse the same questions for different KRs. So mm -hmm. in the template, we've actually got different shuffles so this is a stack of, you know, these questions. And then this is a shuffle, same questions shuffled differently. So if you run out, you can actually just copy all of these, you know, and put them back on your board. You can also come up with your own questions, you know, um, and add them if you like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay, how do we know when everyone's back? I, will, I'll, I have to close the room, so I've given them 30 seconds. So. Perfect. Thank you so much, Savita. Okay. Um, what I'll do when everyone joins is we'll just discuss kind of how we wrap up the game. We have touched on it a bit already as with our team. Um, and then I'll give you all the links to access uh, the game. I think they're all deep in discussions. Nobody wants to leave. Yeah, <laughs> it is, you know, and that's why it's nice to have a, a, enough time to kind of practice. Because I think when you're doing this for the first time, it takes time to kind of figure out how to yeah. do it, you know. It was a really awesome experience. I'm just back from the room. Uh, at first, uh, it was a little difficult to get started. But uh, once we started, uh, it was a really good one. Like after uh, iteration two and three, we got really how to play it around, and uh, I think that really helps to define the better key results. So thanks, awesome. uh, Talia, for sharing this. Thank you. Sorry, I can't see you. I don't know your name, but thank you so much for the feedback. That is Rajesh Panchak. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, awesome. So yeah, maybe. Yeah, they're all back, Talia. Okay, great. Um, let me just share my screen again. I just want to, I mean, we've got just under, just over 15 minutes left. So um, I just want to get some feedback and then uh, I'll show you how, um, how we end the game because it's a short time in this uh, conference. Uh, if you play this with a team, it may take about an hour. Um, again, as a facilitator, you want to be quite strict on the, on the two minute time box. Otherwise, you can spend an hour on one KR. Um, okay, so how did it go? We've already had some feedback. Any Anyone else want to offer? How did it go in your rooms? I, I think it was really... Hello. Uh, uh, sorry, go ahead. Okay, so I think it was really good. Um, I like the iterative way of discuss, define, and do uh, through the ladder. Uh, we were coming back and discussing on the goal again by looking at what was behind the stacked uh, uh, cards and the gamification i think would re work really well so it's a, it's a nice framework talia thanks awesome thank you so much i think with any board game the first first round first two or three rounds is a bit you're not sure what you're doing and then it repeats you know so you get into a rhythm and it becomes quite easy yeah. after that thank you anyone else yeah that was a really great uh, activity uh, we get to know many things uh, there was one uh, uh, one landing point that was skip 
so skip was uh, something that uh, the rolled uh, output needs to be skipped <laughs> <laughs> the skip on the board which one this way it says move back or the arrows no the last last letter skip turn last oh, skip turn yeah true we could take that out maybe it's a bit uh, horrible for people <laughs> so that would be that would make more sense if you so how we'd play this uh, with a real dice is we'd actually everyone in the team would take turns rolling a dice um you know whereas now it's one person so it doesn't really matter so yeah that's good feedback thank you i think we should take that out hi talia yeah bhavini uh, a quick one uh, you know while running this game uh, we are supposed to be defining the key result you know by answering all the questions and as a team uh, overall motive of the entire exercise is essentially working with your management or whoever it is who is an sme and kind of create this key result now in your experience how that has been taken you know uh, because this is kind of a team based okr so if it's a team based okr and at the same time you have mentioned about the aspirational part okay so when that it's the team which is signing up for it the intention is good because the team is signing up for it so it will ensure that they hit that particular goal or they work towards that goal but when it comes to aspirational part and how do your management sees to it because management would always want to push more stronger aspirational how this is kind of taken care so mm. it's a good question um and again i think you know as with any of these techniques um it's not going to be a silver bullet to solve all the challenges within an organization so i understand when you say you know executives will come with these outrageous goals or they'll expect you to push harder and and that kind of thing but uh what i've done with this is either i invite it depends on the culture of the organization So if you have a SME or an executive who's willing to be part of this process it's much better because then you can ask questions and have the conversation in the moment you could say we feel we need to interview 50 employees and the executive would say no i want you to interview 1000 and then you say okay we're very far apart here can we come to a compromise you know and then you can have the conversations in the moment but i think a lot of that actually speaks more to kind of um the organizational culture this technique may not solve everything but what it does do is it helps a team because you're right this is this works well for team okrs it helps a team get alignment and be very specific on what they're working towards then what you can do is you can take those to your executive and say you've told us to improve employee satisfaction this is how we want to achieve it in the next quarter this is specifically what our kind of key results are you know how do you feel about that is that okay so you want to kind of make sure that you are communicating it up um in your organization i'm not sure if that answers your question kind of yes it's okay it's basically i kind of got that you just kind of work or yeah. negotiate in a way uh, with yeah. the yeah thanks okay thanks i think as with anything it helps to make things visible so if your team knows what they can and can't achieve at least you've got it and it's visible and it's tangible and you can take it and have the conversations you need to have with your stakeholders to manage expectations um okay cool so um maybe one more any any other questions or comments before we close out uh, i did see a, a question in the chat which said what if we keep getting the same color card um it's up to you as a facilitator so what i sometimes do is say oof we keep landing on blue let's roll again you know um or you could just say oh i'm just going to move us one more onto the green or something you know so it really depends on your luck um but as a facilitator you can kind of um pick different colors we actually did it in the in the room where we said we keep getting the same cards let's pick a green um you know so the game is more to just kind of facilitate those conversations but you don't have to um 
you know, stick to it as a facilitator, you can always uh, adapt it if you need. Yeah, uh, I, I also would like to add something here. Okay. So we had in our breakout rooms, we had some other thoughts like uh, why we are considering a 50, even though it is just an example. So uh, it is, I think, the counters could be based on the strength of the organization. Let's say if uh, one organization has only 100 employees and the other one has 1,000 employees. So 50 number could not be a correct representative of that. So what we discussed internally in our breakout session is, uh, why not we define a percentage of the organization, let's say 10%. So if uh, the organization is of 100, then we interview 10 people. If it is 1,000, we interview 100 people. And the 10% employee will be from different departments so that we should not target only one department uh, for the um, improvement, but we also consider mm -hmm. thoughts of the, from the other departments as well. Awesome. Exactly. And we actually um, had that conversation in our group as well. And I think it's because we picked up a card that says, can you measure this as a percentage or can you? So it prompted a thinking uh, for our team. And it's, it just shows that although this is a simulation, it's an example, it shows that um, it's quite a powerful conversation to have. So if you do this with your teams for real goals, um, how it can maybe change thinking around uh, some of the goals that you have. So awesome. Thank you so much for that feedback. Okay, so I'm going to show you quickly how we would wrap up, and then I'm going to send you a link to download your version um, of the game. Um, so this is from John Dua, who literally wrote the book on OKRs, and he says, ideas are easy, implementation is everything. So the way that we've structured this game is so that by the time you come out of playing this as a team, you should have identified some actions and some things that you can actually do right after that session. So it helps you not only define your goal, but also it helps you maybe with a starting point of actions as a team because it's great to come up with these goals, but if we don't um, you know, take the actions and take the steps, then, then they just fall flat. So um, here's an example, and this is just my uh, example, right? So what you would do after you've played um, this game is you would go back to your key results, and now you would start to really think about them uh, deeply. Um, so this is my opinion. Um, improve interne internal employee engagement. I haven't reworded the objective, um, but you could if, if you want. Um, what I said after I played this game, uh, you know, with our teams is interview employees on how to improve work culture kind of sounds like an action. So for key results, what would be the result or what would be the outcome of that action? Um, and we actually got one of those cards in our team where we said, what was the benefit of this thing? Um, so for example, this is very much just an example. Um, you could take a measure like a employee net promoter score, for example, and say, actually, our key result would be increase the ENPS from 20 to 30 within the Dragon Slayer team by Q1. Okay, so that's a lot more tangible and specific, and it speaks to an outcome. So in order to improve that score for the employees, there's going to be 20, 30 different actions we have to take as a team. Part of that is interviewing employees. You know, so um, then you would go from all of your notes that you've taken from your conversation. Um, I don't know, you can see mine, my screen's blurred, but I've been scribbling notes here from our conversation. We're now going to say, okay, so what are these actions? So it's actually, you know, interview employees might be an action um, to identify areas that we can improve on. And there might be lots of other actions that we want to do here, but how we're going to measure success is actually through this, for example, the ENPS. 
Does that make sense? Any questions or comments there? So by the end of the game, what you should have had is you should have had really in-depth, awesome conversations. You should have thought about these a bit differently. And then you're going to craft them in a way that is measurable and meaningful for your team, given the context of your organization. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to take all the notes. Hmm, that sounds like an action. That's something we could actually do, um, interview employees or come up with survey questions. Our team had some actions here. You know, come up with survey questions. You know, these sound like actions um, for the team. So when we walk out of this game, we've actually got um, a starting point uh, that we can begin with. Okay, so what I'm gonna do uh, just before I forget, I know that our time is, um, running out. I'm going to share a link on the chat and this is just to download or to copy um, that board. Um, you're welcome to use it, to edit it, to share it um, with your teams. Um, and then also just as a another note, um, we do have a lot of other techniques. Some of them uh, we've developed into virtual techniques like needs games, values games, etc. cetera. Um, so I'm going to share with you a link where you can find other um, activities as well. Okay. Any other questions or comments before we close? Italia, so this is Ankit. Uh, I just want to know, uh, so we figured out uh, that at least uh, in our exercise, KR1, KR1 was totally dependent on uh, KR2. Uh, uh, usually happens. Sorry, there was a little bit of background noise there, Ankit. So KR1 was dependent on KR2. At least, yeah, we were what we were discussing, we found that we cannot move ahead uh, on KR2 at all until, unless we are done with KR1. Okay. Yeah, and then as a team, you would say, you know, uh, do we then say KR1, we want to finish within a month and then we okay. can move on to KR2? Or So I think a lot of it's about having that conversation with the team to say what makes sense for us. Is this a real dependency? If so, we're going to have to focus on that first and okay. then move on to the next. Or are we creating a dependency where we don't need it? You know, can we separate them? Um so I think it's very hard to, um, to do it in a simulated environment, but I hope that at least the framework in the game is something that you can take back and try with your teams. Um, and I think when you play it with your teams, you'll see it's a, a lot easier because Absolutely. you all have the same context and you know the organization, you know, you know the teams, et cetera. Sure. Absolutely. Thank you. Awesome. I just want to thank you all so much for joining the session and for being so willing to play games with me. <laughs> and I hope yeah, that you use it and it's valuable. Yeah? Okay, just, uh, just one uh, uh, clarification. Yeah, so, so the, 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 the end objective of this whole technique is to refine our OKRs or come up with a better OKRs. Correct. Yes. Is, is that is this is, is my understanding correct, or you want to clarify? Yes, that's correct. So the game, the goal of the game is so that the teams can have deep conversations, and then use that to actually refine those those key results, refine their OKRs, so that they're a lot more tangible than just vague statements. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Tadia. Okay, thank you.